massive design flaw with whoever produces this Euro faceplate. So I've had to jump back because I forgot to give identifying marks uh, before taking this to bits. The only identifying things on this is TV and then dash WP2 dash 17 brackets B. Uh, I would not recommend buying one of these. Hi everyone, today I'm going to look at this network socket keystone jack. Uh, which goes in a normal Euro faceplate in the UK and probably Europe, uh, where you punch down your network cable into the back of it, going by the coloured standards, and uh, clip it into the wall, and then you plug your computer or whatever else it is, router, into the socket there. The reason I have this is I went to a place today where this wasn't, well, something wasn't working. The link from uh, one side of the house to the other side of the house wasn't working. Uh, my cable tester showed it as a short between two of the wires within the network cable uh, within one meter of my testing unit, um, which put it here or within about 15 centimeters of the back of this uh, thing here. So I took it off the wall and opened up, or opened up the back box, took this off the wall the first problem I found was the electrician who'd installed it uh, had cut through the orange cable and it was only just making contact because of the pressure on the cable being jammed into the back box. So it was already not great anyway. Chopped the cable uh, and assumed that the uh, a cable had been nicked or something and the, the two wires were shorted because they were mashed together in the back of the back box. So I undid all of these connections at the back, chopped the cable, re-cut uh, it back, split out all the wires and punched them back down onto here. Great, plugged it into my cable tester, everything worked. That's fine. Put it on the wall again, things stopped working. Hmm, okay, not so good. Unscrewed it a little bit so the back box wasn't, or um, the faceplate wasn't fully on the back box and it still didn't work. Unscrewed it fully, it started working. Instead, put the faceplate on, put the bottom part of this in the faceplate and it worked. As soon as I clicked the top part in, you'd get the shorted out pins again. So, it took me ages to work it out, but therefore this was the faulty part. But it reliably works when it's not pushed back into the back box or into the faceplate. And what's got to be going on here is, and, it, and as is very common in these network sockets and back boxes, the cable um, puts pressure on the back of this because it just all can't either fit into the back box or you've got a little loop of like a service loop. So if you have to re-terminate it, you've got enough length there. So it took me a long time to get to this point. There's something wrong with this. And my aim is to open it up and try and work out what is going wrong, uh, what have they manufactured wrong, which means that pressure on the back of here, so probably about there, causes two of the wires, or at least two of the wires to short out. So the first challenge will be extracting the PCB from this keystone jack. There's two clips here. And this may be a one-way journey. I may just uh, have to break these clips. Right, that's one side out. Ah, right, that's probably both of those. So then the next thing is how is it held down at the bottom of this? Also, got to remember where that, the spring is for this uh, shutter at the front because it may well be the spring that causes it. So I'm going to try and keep that in place, which I've already failed to do. In fact, I think I can see that that is the manufacturing defect, is the spring holding it in place 
makes physical contact. So let me uh, try and get this out while leaving the spring in there. Well, fool me, there is actually a screw there that I could have undone to make that easier for myself, but never mind. Let's uh, put this back where it would be. Okay, so that's the sliding door is back in the correct place, and the spring is in the correct place as well. The wires which, well, I can't remember which wires were shorted together, but I think I can see exactly what's going on here. So you'd have the network cable plugged in. So that door will be like that in its open position, which is quite difficult to uh, keep it in that position while trying to line this up. There we go, in its open position when pushed, That spring there probably bridges these two contacts here. Take this off and get there, get rid of that screw so that it sits down easier. Right, that's covers come off. So that's Okay, so I'm now going to plug a cable in and uh, see if I can do a cable, or not a cable test, use a multimeter while putting pressure on some of these pins to see if any of them are shorted. So, there has to be pressure. I'm going to rest it on this. Uh, hopefully that boot of the network cable can bend around. Let's see if I can get a short on any of these. So there we go, there's a short between those two pins and there shouldn't be. So if I look at what colours that would be, that is between the orange, no sorry that's uh, not, it is between the blue and the white and brown. So let's see at what point if I release pressure. Also let's uh, unplug this network cable if I can just to prove that it isn't the network cable doing it. Oh, lost my uh, Lost my contact on the multimeter probes. Ah, right. So it only does it when the door is open as well. So if I open your wow, so this shows how poorly made this is. It's intermittently um, shorting out. If I open, if I open the door on the front of the socket, it causes the spring to move, 
and make contact on the underside of this board. And I can prove that if I take this board back out of here. So, got rid of the spring. So that's the spring causing the problem. Connected to those pins, no problem. So there we go, massive design flaw with whoever produces this TVWP2 17 bracket B uh, Euro faceplate, Cat5, Cat6, whatever it is. Uh, well, it's got the Cat6 on this label here, uh, socket. So inside it, when you open the door, and if there's a, a tiny amount of pressure, uh, or if you're just unlucky because the spring's slightly bigger in your particular manufactured one, when under tension, it moves the spring or makes the spring bigger, which makes contact with those two connections there, shorts out those two pins on the IDC connector. Don't buy these get some good quality ones because you'll just spend forever trying to identify why you have network problems otherwise. I hope this video has helped. If it has, it would be really helpful to me if you wouldn't mind subscribing to my YouTube channel. Thank you very much.